Hey guys, uh, 2020 Grand Design Reflection 311 BHS. I'm gonna do a video here uh, showing my install of a lithium uh, iron phosphate 280 amp hour battery along with a progressive dynamics uh, lithium uh, converter. Uh, it's an 80 amp. Um, currently has a progressive dynamics 60 amp, uh, but it's not a lithium converter. So I'm gonna go walk you through the process that I did to install uh, both of these. All right, let's get started. There's the Progressive Dynamics non-lithium charger, 60 amp that I took out. There's in its place the 80 amp. These wires are going to the DC uh, panel inside, 6 gauge from the factory. These uh, welding wires are 2 gauge. We're going to run them up and over to our new uh, 280 amp hour lithium battery. Alright, we'll get started. Here's the uh, DC AC panel inside and here's where the new progressive dynamics uh, converter plugs in as you can see it's a 20 amp plug sideways but there it is 20 amp plugged in so if you come to my ac panel that's where the uh, converter is the third slot in which is this guy right here as you can see it's only a 15 amp and that goes down to that plug on the back side of this uh, DC panel and um, it's a 20 amp plug obviously but I think we're gonna be just fine with 15 amps if we have problems we'll change it out to a 20 amp pretty cheap easy fix place the circuit breaker but if you took uh, even at max wattage of the uh, new converter 14.4 volts uh, times 80 amps gives you somewhere around 1100 uh, watts. Take that, divide it by 120 uh, volts, gives you somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 or 11 amps at max. So I think the most we're going to be pushing on that is 10 to 11 amps. But uh, we'll see if we have any problems. So here's the new battery. I have uh, old batteries, I moved them to the storage compartment. Um, so I could put generators up front for more storage. So the old setup I had was this uh, one knot gauge cable going to the fuse, going to the inverter negative. That's the uh, Renogy battery monitoring system. And uh, this one knot gauge cable came down to the battery. This came down to the battery. And then this is the original factory cable came down to the battery and it got its power from the uh, main bus bar here, which we're gonna make some changes to. Here's the old battery box set up. Two Costco golf cart batteries. Vented to the front. Did the job, they've lasted five years and they still got plenty of life in them, but uh, on to lithium. All right, here's the battery switch with the lead. It's gonna go to the battery, one out cable. Let me make a little crimp here. Alright, here's the uh, finished, well, almost finished, I just gotta clean everything up. So here's the two gauge wires that I'm gonna mount in there, zip tie, put the uh, wall back on. But uh, basically those two gauge wires come in right here, go through a 
100 amp fuse. It's an 80 amp uh, progressive dynamics lithium charger. This goes to the bus bar that I just installed. This wire here, that's the uh, solar charger to my Renogy charge panel. This uh, two gauge wire here goes to the front, just connects the uh, factory bus bar. Uh, there's the inverter, 2000 watt Renogy. Made all new cables, crimped them. Goes through a 250 amp ANL fuse to the bus bar. One hot gauge cable. New C worthy uh, disconnect. Uh, one knot there, one knot here, and um, this here is the uh, trailer breakaway uh, cable that uh, was hot up on the front bus, but um, it, uh, if I put it behind it, um, when this is off, then the trailer brakes wouldn't work. So just in case somebody forgets, this is hot at all times, um, but this is off and the jacks so or nothing else will work and as long as the, there's no shore power hooked in obviously um so it comes up one knot this is just a uh, little cable that goes to this energy charge controller um other inverter so this is the uh energy charge battery monitor and um that's the one out from the uh inverter and this, uh, I'm gonna run this up here. Just to tell this up here in a minute, make it nice and neat. These holes were already here. Uh, that was my battery vent for my lead acid six boulders. I'll grab uh, some sort of grommet or something to clean that up, make that a little nicer. We're all done here. That's my uh, battery mount that I made, welded up some angle iron. It can sit in there and I've got some straps. I'll show you that when I get it all done here in a minute. To the front, uh, the whole reason I moved the batteries to the uh, pass-through um, is so I, I've got two Onan generators and uh, I can put them up here just for easier access. So there's your Renogy uh, 40 amp uh, charge controller. It goes through a fuse. It's also got uh, a disconnect directly from the solar panel so I can make sure the solar panels aren't providing any electricity. Uh, this two gauge comes from the other bus bar, connects them together. It's not really necessary. Um, it was charging at 75 amps with or without that connected, but um, I left it connected. That way the jacks and stuff have full current from the battery. Uh, I don't think they'll need them, but they're there. This is the uh, goes to the uh, charge panel or the uh, DC panel then to the converter. So it used to go through these, this wire here and another wire that was down on this other end. Uh, goes to the factory battery disconnect. I took that out of the equation, just not needed now. Also put in a um, negative battery bus bar that comes from the uh, battery monitor then to the battery and then you can see I grounded it right there, nice and polished. Moved everything that was a mess of wires down there and moved it up to the bus bar. Uh, that's the uh, charge, the solar charge controller. This is, I think, the uh, jacks. So, put it all back together and think it looked good. This is the uh, breakaway that was connected there for the uh, trailer brakes. So it goes directly hot to the battery now. It was hot right there. Um, but if the battery is disconnected with a disconnect switch, then this wouldn't have any power. So I uh, wanted that to make sure, just in case we forgot, that it would always have trailer brakes. All right, so this is the remote pendant um, that you can, can change the uh, charging schedule. Uh, basically, you push it once and it goes to 14.4 volts, uh, or you can press and hold, and I think it goes to 13.6 idle voltage. Um, it does it automatically, but um, if for some reason it gets confused, you can press the button and get it to do that. So I'm going to run that up. The problem is um, the cord's not long enough to reach from here all the way up to my electrical panel. So I need to extend the wire. I thought it was going to be as simple as uh, just buying this phone jack extender. Um, but 
unfortunately the sizes are the wrong size so that does not go in there uh, so i'm going to cut the wire spice it together um use some heat shrinks and soldering connectors butt connectors and um i'll use this wire and uh, extend it to the length i need i'll be right back Here's all the uh, connectors connected for the pendant. We'll do the shrink wrap now and then uh, fish this wire through. So here's the old pendant that I already had in. And you see I did the same thing with it. I had to make a extension cable. And honestly, I could use this old pendant. I just the new one came with a new one and it doesn't really have those three stages. So just for cosmetic purposes, I just did that. Probably should just change the sticker. It's really the same thing. But, oh well. A little extra work. So, now we're going to fish this end through. Then we'll solder it on the other end. It's going to go through this hole. Right here. I've already ran a uh, rope through when I pulled that one through. So, just to make things easier. Last time I had to fish it with fish sticks. But, um, we'll just uh, tape this on, pull it through and then splice other end and should be in business. All right, well, here we are using fish sticks because my rope pulled off my cable, got stuck somewhere. So back to square one, taped that uh, wire on, ran the fish stick down through, and then I'll pull it through on the other side. All right, got the wire all spliced together, connected. Plugs in right there. Just so y'all know, I already used this little pin, put it in there, and uh, pushed it till I got the lithium, which is the blue light that shows up there. All right, coming up front, there's the Progressive Dynamics uh, charger working with the uh, two gauge uh, welding wire installed. Um, that's the two gauge there that I put in. This is the factory six gauge that goes up to the DC panel. And then from there it runs up to the, uh, now it runs up to the front um, bus bar up there. Uh, before it ran up to the bus bar and then it ran back to this battery disconnect and then from the battery disconnect back up to the bus bar and then powered uh, the battery from there. Um, so basically everything on that front bus bar is hot uh, even though when this is off. So now that I've got it wired in with the uh, seaworthy switch, it's a direct disconnect. So nothing will be hot except for the trailer brakes. Um, so it shouldn't have any drain on the battery or uh, much less parasitic drain. Um, coming up front, you can hear the fans kicking on that. So it's charging. There we go, charging at 74 amps, 13.8 volts. All right, hair's been running for about three or four minutes with the uh, microwave and tank heaters going about uh, 1,800 to 2,000 watts. Filling these, they don't feel just barely warm. It's about 50 degrees outside right now. Just give an idea of uh, this cable here. It's about 50 degrees. There's the solar cable. Nothing's going through those right now. Now if we... That was about 53. 
Now, as you can see, those cables are handling it just fine. Probably overkill. There's kind of the hottest right there. Is that a short one? Alright guys, there's the uh, finished product, batteries mounted, secured to the floor, strapped in, installed the uh, rubber grommets here, um, just to clean it up a little bit, everything's nice and secured, the uh, two gauge wires that come in from the converter, secured there to the uh, roof here in the uh, storage compartment, they're also secured with a zip tie screwed to the floor about six inches where they plug into the uh, converter just so nothing's wiggling around. Um, so it's secured on both ends nice and tight. This uh, new Seaworthy switch is going to be a lot better for us um, with the uh, new lithium battery just to make sure there's not any parasitic drains on this. So when we put it in storage mode, we'll just turn that off and uh, there'll be no power. Uh, drain it off from it. It's going to work out a lot better than that, which uh, left a lot of stuff uh, live. So, up front, did the same thing. Put a grommet on both of those just to help clean this up a little bit. This bundle of wires here uh, goes to the Bluetooth and then the uh, battery temperature for the uh, solar controller. So, uh, it's the best I could do. But uh, I might do a little bit more zip tying just to tidy this up a little bit. Um, might do a follow-up video just talking about the uh, AC load put on that 15 amp uh, circuit breaker from the uh, converter just to test that at uh, full capacity and, and see what it's doing. Um, made it this far. Appreciate you watching. Thanks.